Fermentation technology is the process used for microbial synthesis of specific products or biomass. To begin with, is there a difference between cellular respiration and fermentation? Cellular respiration is the process by which organic compounds are converted enzymatically into other products and energy is generated in the form of ATP. When this happens in the absence of oxygen, it is called fermentation which is why Pasteur described it as life without air. In biomanufacturing, the term fermentation is used to describe a process that can be run with or without oxygen. As we'll see a bit later, it is far more efficient to run fermentation in the presence of oxygen. In the biopharmaceutical industry, fermentation is used to convert low-value products into a variety of high-value products. The five main products are cells such as yeast that are used in baking, enzymes and other proteins such as cellulases that are sold commercially, primary metabolites such as ethanol, secondary metabolites such as antibiotics and other chemicals including steroids. Primary and secondary metabolites differ typically in the timing of their appearance relative to cell growth. Primary metabolites are usually produced as part of metabolism to generate energy and are linked to the growth of cells. In this example, the production of ethanol parallels the increase in the number of yeast organisms as the sugar substrate is consumed. In contrast, secondary metabolites are not linked to an increase in the number of organisms and usually appear later in the growth process. In this example, the peak in the growth of cells precedes the use of the sugar substrate to produce the antibiotic penicillin. Five different types of media can be used in fermentation. As its name suggests, minimal media provides the bare essentials for cell growth. This media commonly is used for labeling a cells with radioisotopes or as a base for fed batch fermentation. The second type of media is called defined media because it has a specific chemical composition. In this example, it is used to make an auger plate but can also be used in liquid formulations. Complex media is commonly used in research labs and consists of components such as yeast extract or hydrolyzed protein. Selective media includes an ingredient that allows one type of microorganism to grow while preventing the growth of others. The most common example is the use of antibiotics to select for bacteria that uptake a plasmid containing the corresponding antibiotic resistance gene. The final type of media is called differential media because microorganisms grown on it display different phenotypes. For example, McConkie auger contains bile salts and crystal violet dye that inhibit the growth of gram-positive bacteria, as well as the dye that turns pink when gram-negative bacteria grow and ferment lactose. The equipment used in the fermentation process, which involves growth of bacteria or fungi, is called a fermenter. There are three types of fermenters with the most common being stirred tank. This consists of a stainless steel or glass tank inside of which the media is mixed with microorganisms and dissolved oxygen. A second piece of equipment that functions like a fermenter is the bioreactor. It is called a bioreactor when it is used to grow mammalian cells. As its name suggests, a wave bioreactor rocks back and forth creating a wave-like motion that mixes the cells, media, and dissolved oxygen. Bioreactors are typically used for biopharmaceutical product production or as sea tanks for larger bioreactors. The airlift bioreactor uses gas bubbles to mix and oxygenate the media within the vessel, thereby resulting in less shear stress than fermenters. The bubbles typically originate from the bottom of the vessel, and circulate inside the vessel to help with mixing and oxygenation. These bioreactors are used for growing shear sensitive cells such as plant cells since there are no impellers which cause shear stress. A variety of microorganisms and mammalian cell lines are used for fermentation processes. Some strains are naturally occurring environmental isolates and these along with well identified strains are available as part of culture collections such as the American Type Culture Collection or ATCC. Similarly, hundreds of strains of E. coli are available, some of which are in the Coli Genetic Stock Center 
or CGSC. Fungal strains can be ordered from the Fungal Genetic Stock Center or FGSC as well as other sources. Novel strains of bacteria such as E. coli can be created in the lab through the incorporation of plasmids. This process transforms these bacteria and other strains that can express proteins from other organisms. Alternatively, changes can be made in the intracellular pathways that result in the production of new chemicals by these cells. Additional approaches have been developed to create stable cell lines of bacteria, fungi, and mammalian cells. In doing so, specific genes of interest are integrated into the cell's chromosome. As mentioned previously, plasmids can be used to introduce novel DNA sequences into cells. There are several elements that are necessary for protein expression. Examples include a ribosome binding site, a promoter region, an origin of replication to propagate the plasmid, an antibiotic resistance gene used for selection purposes, and the gene for the protein of interest. Once the strain has been chosen, production can begin. There are four phases of cell growth. These phases are usually tracked periodically by measuring the optical density of the culture media. This provides a good estimate of the total cell number at any particular time. The first is the lag phase, which is when the cells are preparing to divide. Cell division occurs in the next phase, which is called the exponential phase. It is characterized by a rapid increase in cell numbers as they grow exponentially. The stationary phase begins when the nutrients are depleted or other factors cause the cells to stop dividing. The final phase is the death phase in which cell numbers start to decline as few new cells are produced to replace those that have died. Cell numbers can be estimated by measuring the light absorbed at wavelengths around 550 to 600 nanometers. As shown in the figure, this works by shining light through a culture filter to the desired wavelength, which is then recorded. For standard spectrophotometers, the usable limit of detection is around one optical density, or OD. After this, cultures should be diluted in order to calculate the final OD. Another type of instrument to estimate cell growth is a clep meter. These photometric colorimeters use specific light filters to give readings on a unique clet scale. The readings are directly proportional to the cell concentration or optical density of a culture. Because of cell division, microbial growth is exponential, as shown in the displayed graph. To calculate cell numbers at generation n, multiply the initial cell number of n sub zero by two to the power of the total generations. The time between generations is called doubling time and is described by the formula at the bottom of the slide. Another way to calculate the specific growth rate, or mu, as it is commonly referred to, is to divide the natural log of 2, which is approximately 0.693, by the slope of the exponential curve. In the example shown in this slide, the calculated slope is 0.0358, so the doubling time in this case would be 19.36 minutes. In order for cells to grow, they need nutrients. As shown in the table here, Carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen are the most abundant and are the main consideration in media formulations. Other components such as sulfur, magnesium, calcium, and iron play a role as cofactors and components of proteins. As mentioned before, there are major and minor nutrients for growth. These nutritional requirements serve as the electron acceptors that are part of the metabolism of organisms and result in energy production. The formulation of these components have a direct effect on fermentation yields, as we will see in later videos. As was mentioned earlier, rich media is commonly used in research labs and in cell culture for larger scale fermentations. This media contains all of the nutrients required for growth and is comprised of proteins and protein fragments, along with other factors. Rich media supports robust growth because cells don't have to manufacture key components for growth as they can be directly derived from the media. There are several types of rich media, including casein, tryptone, peptones, and yeast extract. They are all prepared different ways, but are essentially hydrolysates of larger proteins. 
These components are formulated into different media recipes that have been developed. As shown in the table here, these recipes include LB, Luria broth, and the richer formulations including super broth, terrific broth, and YPD. Some of these are buffered as acid production can occur because of excess nutrients being introduced in a batch versus being fed as mentioned previously. Originally derived from animal sources, most of the rich media products are plant-based in order to meet regulatory requirements that disallow animal components because of risk of viral or other contaminants such as prion. The source material and any enzymes that are used in the manufacturing of the media must also be considered. Animal-free material typically uses plant-based proteins from pea, sunflower, corn, potato, rice, wheat, and soy. Another development is the use of cell for auto-inducing media, which does not require the operator to monitor the optical density. This is because the culture is induced after a key nutrient has been used up. Typically, this nutrient is glucose, which causes repression of gene expression, and then the culture can be induced with lactose, which isn't as strong as of an inducer as IPTG, but works after the glucose is depleted just as well. Rich media has several advantages over other media, including resulting in higher yields and faster growth rates. The user does not need to understand the metabolism in order to use rich media, as growth is very reliable, and there are lots of data on use of rich media and growth rates for many organisms. The media is easy to prepare, and there are lots of different sources of this material. In many cases, protein expression optimization strategies include a media optimization component where different rich media and different lots of the media are tested. Rich media has some disadvantages, mainly due to the fast growth rates achieved. Organisms can be produced up to around ODs of 30, which is lower than fed batch methods, as we will see in later videos. This can result in an aberrant protein expression, causing inclusion body formation and or protein degradation. In addition, complex media introduces a heterogeneous mixture of proteins, which have to be dealt with later during downstream processing. In addition, other challenges exist in scale of fermentation from use of rich media. These include loss of ability to control oxygen and higher demand for cooling due to excessive heating of cultures. In addition, there can be batch-to-batch -batch variability in media lots and between vendors, so it is recommended to test batches before scaling up. In conclusion, the primary aim of fermentation is maximizing product yield. This may not necessarily be biomass because the two are not always linked. Common strategies include building up biomass, then using an inducible genetic system to produce a product at high biomass levels. In the next lecture, we'll go into details of the simplest fermentation platform, batch fermentation.